Hope you liked my video about my room, my office, and I figured that I would read to you a few more chapters from the book that we have been reading, The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo. So you need to get out your journal because we'll be writing down stuff in our journal as we read the book. Let's look at what we wrote last time. This was back on March 31st. We wrote the title of our book, Tale of Despero, March 31st, 2020, chapter 35. And our vocabulary words were pondering and gratitude. We made a prediction about the chapter. Our prediction was, my prediction is that Despero will cry because his tail got chopped off. And in the notes, we drew a picture of Despero crying and the things he was crying about. Pain, he's happy to be alive, save the princess. Who is the knight in Despero's dream was a question that wrote. The summary of the chapter was, Despero cried himself to sleep. In his dreams, he dreamt about the dark and the white. He saw a knight, but no one was in the armor. And then we read chapter 36. And the vocabulary words we learned about were ominous and covert. And our prediction was, my prediction is that Mig will try to kidnap Princess. And this is Mig in her apron with the two pockets. And in one pocket she had the knife and in the other pocket she had Ruskero the rat. And the summary of this chapter was, Mig was climbing the stairs to the princess's room she had a knife in her left pocket and she had Roscuro in her right pocket. Mig revealed her plans, but Roscuro kept his plan a secret. And then we read chapter 37. And the vocabulary words in chapter 37 were sensibilities and defiant. And the prediction for the chapter was, my prediction is that someone is dreaming about tasting soup. And in our notes for the chapter, we drew a picture of Princess P, who is being confronted by Mig, and Roscaro is up on her shoulder, and he's saying, do as I say. And we labeled this illustration, Princess P and Mig, and she's scared and confused. And then here's the summary of the chapter. It says, Princess P was dreaming that her mom was giving her soup. Mig woke her up and she and Roscaro made her put on her crown and banquet gown so they could take her down into the dungeon. And then we read chapter 38. And the vocabulary words for chapter 38 were dappled and empathetic. And the prediction for it is, my prediction is that Princess P will be taken down into the dungeon. And our notes, we drew a heart. And that was Princess P's heart. And the chapter described what was all in her heart and it said that there was hatred for the rat and there was sorrow because her mom died. But then it was dappled with kindness and empathy. And our summary for the chapter is Mig held a knife to Princess P's back and walked her down into the dungeon. We learned that Princess P's heart was composed of hatred, sorrow, kindness, and empathy. 
So that means we are on chapter 39. So at the top of your page, right? April 7th. 2020, or if today is the 8th when you are watching this, write the 8th, and write chapter 39, you can make a little abbreviation, chapter 39. First thing we're going to do is look at our one vocabulary word for chapter 39, and it is the word riddance. Riddance. So let's write riddance into our reading journal. Riddance is the action of getting rid of a troublesome or unwanted person or thing. You got, you had good riddance. If someone is leaving and you don't like them anyways and they're gone and you say, a figure of speech is to say, well, good riddance. Now let's look at chapter 39. Thirty-nine. Name of it is missing. Hmm. Missing. Well, I'm going to read you a couple of questions to be thinking about while we read the chapter. And it says, so be thinking about this the whole time that I'm reading to you. It says, Cook and Despero were feeling the same way in the morning. Okay, so I remember Despero was in the closet crying after his tail got chopped off and then he fell asleep and was dreaming. How were they feeling? What do you think Despero will do when he meets the king? How do you think the king will react? Well, the name of this chapter is missing and it has an exclamation point on it. So my prediction is that Despero is going to find out that the princess has been kidnapped and is missing. So that's what I'm gonna write. My prediction is that Despero will find out the princess is missing. My prediction is that Despero will find out the princess is missing. See what happens. Chapter 39, Missing. The sun rose and shed light on what Roscuro and Miggery Sal had done. 
And finally, Despero awoke. But alas, he awoke too late. I haven't seen her, Luis was shouting. And I tell you, I wash my hands of her. If she's missing, I say good riddance. Good riddance to bad rubbish. That is what someone named Luis is saying about Princess P. How, how could they? Oh, I bet they're talking about Meg. It's the kitchen. And so it's probably people who work in the kitchen and they probably wouldn't be talking about the princess in that way. They probably, they're mean to Meg. So they're probably talking about Meg and they're saying good riddance about her. Despero sat up. He looked behind him. Oh, his tail. Gone. Given over to the knife and where the tail should be. Nothing but a bloody stump. And more foul play. Gregory dead, shouted Cook. Poor old man. That rope of his broken by who knows what. And him lost in the dark and frightened to death because of it. It's too much. So they know that the rope that was keeping Gregory from getting lost in the dungeon was chewed away and now Gregory is missing. Oh no, whispered Despero. Oh no, Gregory is dead. The mouse got to his feet and began the long climb down from the shelf. Once he was on the floor, he stuck his head around the door of the pantry and saw Cook standing in the center of the kitchen, wringing her fat hands. Beside her stood a tall woman, jangling a ring of keys. That's right, said Louise. All the king's men was down there searching for her in the dungeon. And when they came back up, when they come back up, who do they have with them? They have the old man, dead. And now you tell me that Mig is missing and I say, who cares? Despero made a small noise of despair. He had slept too long. The rat had already acted. The princess was gone. What kind of world is it, Miss Louise, where princesses are taken from right under our noses and queens drop dead and we cannot even take comfort in soup? And with this, Cook started to cry. Shh, said Louise, I beg you, do not say that word. Soup, shouted Cook. I will say it. No one can stop me. Soup, soup, soup. And then she began to cry in earnest, wailing and sobbing. There, said Louise. She, there, said Louise. She put a hand out to touch Cook and Cook slapped it away. It'll be all right, said Louise. Cook brought the hem of her apron up to wipe at her tears. It won't, she said. It won't be all right ever again. They've taken our little darling away. There ain't nothing left to live for without the princess. Despero was amazed to have exactly what was in his heart spoken aloud by such a ferocious mouse-hating woman as Cook. Louise again reached out to touch Cook, and this time Cook allowed her to put her arm around her shoulder. What will we do? What will we do? I think that for our notes for this chapter, for our visualization of what is going on, we should draw a picture of the cook making a hat, a cook's hat. I haven't put her hair on there yet. Her hat looks kind of funny, doesn't it? Make her ears. 
back in her hair now. She has a lot of hair in my picture. Her hat looks funny. <laughs> Trying to make him a chef's hat. Like her eyeballs. She's sad. She's got tears. What's she sad about? She's sad because she lives in a kingdom where the queen is dead and the beloved princess is missing and you can't even eat soup anymore. It's, just, it's all terrible. Some lady named Louise is comforting her by putting her hand on her shoulder. It's her hand. I'm let her arm reach over and draw her friend. She's going to be saying, There, there now. There, there. It's going to be okay. Being empathetic, isn't she? Putting her arm around her. I draw the pantry in the background. The mouse sticking out. The door to the pantry. Despero is ticking out. Listening to what's going on. There he is. It's all ears. You're listening. No soup. Princess gone. But they didn't care about Meg being gone, did they? Princess P is gone. Let's read the rest of the chapter. And Louise said, shh, there, there. And the cook is saying, what will we do? What will we do? Alas, there was no one to comfort Despero, and there was no time anyway for him to cry. He knew what he had to do. He had to find the king. Four, having heard Roscaro's plan, reader, Despero knew that the princess was hidden in the dungeon. And being somewhat smarter than Migri Sal, he sensed the terrible unspoken truth behind Roscaro's words. He knew that Mig could never be a princess, and he knew that the rat, once he captured the pea, would never let her go. And so the small mouse, who had been dipped in oil, covered in flour, and relieved of his tail, slipped out of the pantry and passed the weeping ladies. He went to find the king. That's the end of that chapter. So 
let's look at our questions. Say, Cook and Despero were feeling the same way in the morning. How are they feeling? They're feeling sad. You're crying and wailing and feeling sad. What do you think Despero will do when he meets the king? Well, he's going to go to that king and he's going to try to tell that king, hey, I know I'm just a mouse, but I heard an evil plan by this rat named Roscoe, and he said he was going to do something about the princess because he doesn't like the princess because of what happened. How do you think the king will react? I don't know. Hopefully the king is very concerned about his daughter. I'm sure he is. And hopefully he'll listen to Despero so that they can go and rescue the princess. So let's write a summary of what happened in the chapter we just read. Despero awoke to two ladies, Luis and cook crying in the kitchen. Despero I'm going to label this summary. It's a few short sentences about what happened. Despero awoke Two ladies, comma, cook, and Louise, and comma, crying because the princess. And then Despero decided he needed to go see the king. Despero decided to find the king and tell him about Rascaro's apostrophe s evil plan. Whose evil plan is it? Rust girls. Here's a summary. Despero awoke to hear two ladies, comma, Cook and Louise, in comma, crying because the princess is missing. Despero decided to find the king and tell him about Rascaro's evil plan. Right. Let's turn the page and do chapter 40. Right, chapter 40 at the top of your next journal page. As you can see, we have three vocabulary words for chapter 40. Debating, makeshift, and renounce. Debating, makeshift, and renounce. Debating. 
Debating means to argue about something. We're debating it or arguing about it. A makeshift is serving as a temporary substitute, sufficient for the time being. This is a makeshift classroom. It's sufficient for now. It's a substitute for a real classroom. It's just makeshift. Um, renounce. Renounce means to formally declare one's abandonment of a claim. And that is what the Mouse Council tried to make Despero do. They told him to renounce his act of talking to the humans and loving Princess P, and he would not. I will not renounce that formally. It's declared. He like to renounce something like that. He would. The mouse would have had to been like, I formally declare in front of you guys. I'm going to tell you I was wrong, and I should not have been talking to humans, and I should not love the princess. That would be his renouncement. He would have renounced it, but he would not do that. He did not. So let's write those three words. Debating. Makeshift. And renounce. There they are. And so now, let's make a prediction about the next chapter. This one is called Forgiveness. There's no way of predicting what is gonna be in this chapter other than there is a picture. Look at the picture and make a prediction. What does it say? Son, you have come back. Oh my gosh. We just got through talking about the Mouse Council and that looks like the Mouse Council. And there's Despero. They're pointing at him. So my prediction is that Despero is going to reveal to the Mouse Council that he's still alive put him down into the dungeon. So my prediction is, my prediction is that Despero will reveal to the Mouse Council that he is still Prediction is that Despero will reveal to the Mouse Council that he is still alive. Ooh. Let's read and find out. What are our questions for this chapter? The questions are. What does the Mouse Council think when they see Despero? What does Lester ask Despero? What does Despero tell his father? Okay. Well, let's find out. Chapter 40, Forgiveness. 
He went first to the throne room, but the king was not there. And so Despero slipped through a hole in the molding and was making his way to the princess's room when he came upon the mouse council. Thirteen mice and one most very honored head mouse sitting around their piece of wood debating important mouse matters. That's one of our vocabulary words. They were arguing. Despero stopped and stood very still. Fellow honored mouse, said the most very honored head mouse. And then he looked up from the makeshift table. So it wasn't a real table, it was something they used to, to make a table. And saw Despero. Despero, he whispered. The other mice of the council leaned forward, straining to make some sense of the word that the head mouse had just uttered. Pardon, said one. Excuse me, said another. I didn't hear right, said a third. I thought you said Despero. The head mouse gathered himself. He tried speaking again. Fellow members, he said, a ghost, a ghost. And he raised a shaking paw and pointed it at Despero. The other mice turned and looked, and there was Despero tilling covered in flour, looking back at them. I bet he did look like a ghost since he was covered in flour. Looking back at them, the telltale red thread still around his neck like a thin trail of blood. Despero, said Lester. Son, you have come back. Despero looked at his father and saw an old mouse whose fur was shot through with gray. How could that be? Despero had been gone only a few days, but his father seemed to have aged many years in his absence. I guess the loss of his son took a toll on him. Son, ghost of my son, said Lester, his whiskers trembling. I dream about you every night. I dream about beating the drum that sent you to your death. I was wrong. What I did was wrong. No, called the most very honored head mouse. No. I've destroyed it, said Lester. I've destroyed the drum. Will you forgive me? He clasped his front paws together and looked at his son. No, shouted the head mouse again. No, do not ask the ghost to forgive you, Lester. You did as you should. You did what was best for the mouse community. Lester ignored the head mouse. Son, he said, please. Despero looked at his father at his gray streaked fur and trembling whisper, whiskers and his front paws clasped together in front of his heart. And he felt suddenly as if his own heart would break in two. His father looked so small, so sad. Forgive me, said Lester again. Forgiveness, reader, is, I think, something very much like hope and love, a powerful, wonderful thing, and a ridiculous thing too. Isn't it ridiculous, after all, to think that a son could forgive his father for beating the drum that sent him to his death? Isn't it ridiculous to think that a mouse could ever forgive anyone for such a perfidy. But still, here are the words Despero Tilling spoke to his father. He said, I forgive you, Paul. And he said those words because he sensed that it was the only way to save his own heart, to, to stop his own heart from breaking in two. Despero, reader, spoke these words to save himself. 
And then he turned from his father and spoke to the whole mouse council. You were wrong, he said, all of you. You asked me to renounce my sins. I ask you to renounce yours. You wronged me, repent. Never, said the head mouse. Okay, we better draw something. Notes about what is happening in this chapter. All right, notes. And we like to visualize while we're reading. We make little pictures in our heads of what is going on. And in this one, Lester Despero's dad is begging him to forgive him for what he did. So I'm gonna draw a mouse. A mouse man named Lester. Call him Lester. Forgive me. He's going to have his hands out. Forgive me. Please. Please. made his tail pretty big. Where is it? There he is. <laughs> his hands are out. He's going to have a speech bubble. He's going to say, forgive me. Forgive me, Despero. Forgive me, comma. Despero. That's what he's saying. Lester, the Despero's dad. Despero apostrophe S. Dad. Whose dad is it? Despero's dad. Despero stood before the mouse council and he realized that he was a different mouse than he had been the last time he faced them. He had been to the dungeon and back up out of it. He knew things that they would never know. What they thought of him, he realized, did not matter. Not at all. And so without saying another word, Despero turned and left the room. After he was gone, the head mouse slapped his trem trembling paw on the table. Mice of the council, he said, we have been paid a visit by a ghost who has told us to repent. We will now take a vote, all in favor of saying that this visit did not occur, vote aye. And from the members of the mouse council, there came a tiny but emphatic chorus of eyes. Only one mouse said nothing. That mouse was Despero's father. Lester Tilling had turned his head away from the other members of the mouse council. He was trying to hide his tears. He was crying, readers, because he had been forgiven. I better make some tears coming out of this man's eyes in that picture. Make some crying tears. Forgive me, forgive me. Should I make the drum broken on the side? This is the drum. He destroyed it. Let's see, he played that drum. 
and there was something desperate down into the dungeon. Oh, it's broken. The drum. Okay, well let's let revisit the questions about the chapter. What does the Mouse Council think when they see Despero? They think he's a ghost. What does Lester ask Despero? Lester asks his son to forgive him. What does Despero tell his father? He says that he forgives him. And then the Mouse Council decides to pretend as though none of this happened. That is how they decide to deal with the situation. They are very obtuse. Okay, so let's write a summary of what happened in this chapter. Despero basically accidentally ran into the Mouse Council. So I'm going to put accidentally. ran into the mouse council because he was actually on his way to find the king. Mouse council, period. Despero accidentally ran into the mouse council and I'm gonna put they thought he was a ghost. Ghost. And I will put Lester asked his son to forgive him. I'll make a compound sentence. I'm going to put a comma after that and a conjunction and. They thought he was a ghost, period. That's one complete sentence. And then I started a new sentence and I wrote, Lester asked his son to forgive him, comma, and Despero forgave him. That's the second part of that compound sentence. Second sentence. Compound sentence is putting two complete sentences together with a conjunction and a comma. And our conjunction that we used was and. And Despero did say, asked him son to forgive him, and Despero did, period. I might add on to that. The mouse council decided to pretend as though this never happened. The mouse council decided to pretend none of this had happened. Wasn't that something? And that's going to take us to our last chapter that I'm going to read today, chapter 41. Let's turn to a fresh page and write chapter 41. What is going to be our vocabulary word in chapter 41? It's going to be tapestry and audible. Tapestry and audible. Tas tapestry is a thick piece of fabric with pictures or designs. People make them and hang them up. Audible, it means able to be heard. So if this video is audible, that means you can hear it. 
if it was inaudible, you'd be like, I cannot hear it. It's inaudible. But you're like, I can hear it. It's an audible video. I can hear it. Okay. So let's make a prediction about this upcoming chapter. Well, first we need to write our words. Tapestry and audible. Tapestry and audible. We wrote them. Boom. Now let's read what the name of the chapter is and it will give us a clue. Chapter 41. It is called The Tears of a King. So I would guess that Despero finds the king and that the king is sad. My prediction is that Despero finds the king crying? Period. That is my prediction. My prediction is that Despero finds the king crying. Okay, so what is our questions for the chapter? Chapter 41 questions. How does the king respond to Despero? What does Despero realize about the night in his dream? Oh my. Remember his dream that he had? Chapter 41, The Tears of a King. Despero found the king in the peas room, sitting on his daughter's bed, clutching the tapestry of her life to his chest. So someone had woven a tapestry that depicted in pictures the life of Princess P. And the king had taken it down off the wall and was clutching it and crying. He was weeping, although weeping really is too small a word for the activity that the king had undertaken. Tears were cascading from his eyes a small puddle had formed at his feet. I am not exaggerating. The king, it seemed, was intent on crying himself a river. What did we call those figure of speeches? Hyperbolas, when someone is exaggerating, it's a figure of speech, it's a hyperbola. Uh, the king was crying himself a river. Was it really a river? No, it's just a figure of speech. Reader, have you ever seen a king cry when the powerful are made weak, when they are revealed to be human, to have hearts? Their diminishment is nothing short of terrifying. You can be sure that Despero was terrified. Absolutely but he spoke up anyway. Sir, the mouse said to the king. But the king did not hear him. And as Despero watched, King Philip dropped the tapestry and took his great golden crown from his lap and used it to beat himself on the chest over and over again. The king, as I have already mentioned, had several faults. He was nearsighted. He made ridiculous, unreasonable, difficult to enforce laws, such as outlawing soup. And much in the way of Miggery Sow, he was not exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer. Again, that is a metaphor. He's not really a knife. It's comparing the king to an unsharpened knife. If we had used the word like or as, if it had said the king is as stupid as an unsharpened knife and you use the word as, it would be called a simile. But if it does not use the word as, then it's called a metaphor. But there was one extraordinary, wonderful, admirable thing about the king. 
He was a man who was able and willing to move with the whole of his heart. And just as he had loved the queen with the whole of his heart, so too he loved his daughter with the whole of it, even more than the whole. He loved the Princess P with every particle of his being, and she had been taken from him. But what Despero had come to say to the king had to be said, and so he tried again. Excuse me, he said. He wasn't certain really how a mouse should address a king. Sir did not seem like big enough a word. Despero thought about it. He cleared his throat. He spoke as loudly as he was capable of speaking. Excuse me, most very honored head person. King Philip stopped beating his crown against his chest. He looked around the room. Down here, most very honored head person, said Despero. The king, tears still falling from his eyes, looked at the floor. He squinted. Is that a bug speaking to me, he asked. No, said Despero. I'm a mouse. We met before. A mouse, bellowed the king. A mouse is but one step removed from a rat. Sir, said Despero, most very honored head person, please. You have to listen to me. This is important. I know where your daughter is. You do, said the king. He sniffed. He blew his nose on his royal cloak. Where, he said. And as he bent over to look more closely at Despero, one tear, two tears, three enormous king-sized tears fell with an audible plop onto Despero's head and rolled down his back. Audible. Remember, that's one of our words. That means you could hear that plop. And the word plop is an onomatopoeia. That's a figure of speech. That's a word that sounds like what it means. Plop. Means plop. And that's how it sounds. So if you heard your brain drop plop, it would sound like that plop. Despero's head and rolled down his back, washing away the white of the flower and revealing his own brown fur. Sir, most very honored head person, sir, said Despero, as he wiped the king's tears out of his own eyes. She's in the dungeon. A liar, said the king. He sat back up. I knew it. All rodents are liars and thieves. She is not in the dungeon. My men have searched the dungeon. But no one really knows the dungeon except the rats, sir. There are thousands of places where they, where she could have, could have been hidden and only the rats would know. Your men would never be able to find her if the rats did not want her found, <sighs> said the king. And he clapped his hands over his ears. Do not speak to me of rats and what they know, he shouted. Rats are illegal. Rats are against the law. There are no rats in my kingdom. They do not exist. Sir, most very honored head person, that is not true. Hundreds of rats live in the dungeon of the castle. One of them has taken your daughter and if you will send, he's being cut off. The king started humming, I cannot hear you. He stopped to shout, I cannot hear you in any way. What you say is wrong because you are a rodent and therefore a liar. He started to hum again. And then he stopped and said, I have hired fortune tellers and a magician they are coming from a distant land. They will tell me where my beautiful daughter is. They will speak the truth. A mouse cannot speak the truth. I am telling you the truth, said Despero. I promise. But the king would not listen. 
He sat with his hands over his ears. He hummed loudly. Big fat tears rolled down his face and fell to the floor. It looks like we're gonna need to draw another crying person. Our notes for this chapter. Chapter 41, our visualization is gonna have to be the king crying and covering his ears and not listening to Despero at all. So first I'm gonna draw a crown and I'm gonna draw his hands over his ears. Arms have to reach back around to his body. I'll make him with a big nose. And crying, of course. No, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you, mouse. His arms coming out of his body. There he is. He's got his arm, his hands covering his ears. I'm gonna put some musical notes around him because that's he's humming. I can't hear you. Should we draw Despero? He's trying to talk to him. Draw his nose first with his whiskers. trying to talk to him. I'm gonna make a bubble and he's gonna say, listen to me, listen to me, please. Listen to me, please. Please listen to me. Let's see what happens in the rest of this chapter. But the king would not listen. He sat with his hands over his ears. He hummed loudly. Big fat tears rolled down his face and fell to the floor. Despero sat and stared at him in dismay. What should he do now? He put a nervous paw up to his neck and pulled at the red thread. And suddenly his dream came flooding back to him. The dark and the light and the night swinging his sword and the terrible moment when he had realized that the suit of armor was empty. And then reader, as he stood before the king, a wonderful, amazing thought occurred to the mouse. What if the suit of honor, armor had been empty for a reason? What if it had been empty because it was waiting for him? You know me, that was what the night, you know me, that was what the night in his dream had said. Yes, said Despero out loud in wonder. I do know you. I can't hear you, sang the king. 
I'll have to do it myself, said the mouse. I will be the knight in shining armor. There is no other way. It has to be me. Despero turned. He left the weeping king. He went to find Threadmaster. That's the end of this chapter. So let's look at our questions again. How does the king respond to Despero? Well, he tells him he's a liar and a thief because he's a mouse. He listens to his story a little bit, but then he's like, nope, I sent my knights down into the dungeon. They didn't find her, and so you're lying. And then Despero is like, no, you don't know. There's rats down there, and they know how to hide people really well. They know all the, the secret hiding places. And he's like, there's no rats. I banned rats. No rats exist. And he's like, yes, they do. They're down there. And he's like, I'm not listening to you. And I don't hear you, mouse. And the next question says, what does Despero realize about the night in his dream? Well, he had been very confused by his dream before because there was an armor, a suit of armor, a knight. But he opened up it and there was no one in there. And the only thing that the armor said was, so Despero was like, oh my gosh, maybe the armor was waiting for me because guess what? I know me. I have to be the knight. I have to save the princess myself. I have to do it all myself. So let's write a conclusion, I mean a summary of what just happened. Summary. summary would be that Despero tried desperately to convince the king that the Princess P was down in the dungeon. Despero tried desperately to convince the king that his daughter, Princess P, was down. Despero tried desperately to convince the king that his daughter, Princess P, was down in the dungeon. The king did not believe him. Comma, we'll make a compound sentence. And so Despero realized he must save the princess himself. And that is our summary of chapter 41. The king did not believe him, comma, and so Despero realized he must save the princess himself. Well, I wonder what's going to happen next in our story. Tune in to my next video to find out.